Welcome back to Gamescom Studio, powered by IGN. Are you sick of your corporate job? Are you burnt out and needing a serious change of environment? Well, look no further, because joining me today are Regina Reisinger and Philip Seyfried from Microbird. Welcome! Hi, thank you so, thank much. You so much for having us. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about this game. So, we talk about how this character is a burnt out lawyer, right? How did you come upon creating this backstory for this character? Um, we, when we, when we started thinking about Hinterberg and the and the story, we wanted something a little bit realistic and uh, sort of this this mixture of of magic and realism and someone needing to take a break and to take a vacation and to sort of introduce the player to this to this theme of Hinterberg as a as a place where you can take a holiday. And we thought a lot about the character and you know ended up uh, ended up thinking about how we can distill our own experiences of really needing a holiday into <laughs> like a into like a protagonist and we sort of came from a uh, from a background of you know mm. having worked too much as well so <laughs> it's kind of a natural yeah, thing we to thought Everyone yeah. can relate a bit to this yeah. feeling of needing a holiday, and if it's a magical one, it's even better, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you were describing her, and I was like, oh, that's just me. No, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I feel exactly. very connected to her. <laughs> so there's obviously a very big contrast between the calm and idyllic Alpine setting uh, and magic-infused combat, because you're going to the Alps to fight monsters and go dungeon hunting. So uh, what's the balance between action and adventuring and exploring in this game? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, it's generally like we describe it as an action RPG with social simulation elements. And that's kind of um, where this contrast also comes in. Like you're in this little village in Hinterberg in the Austrian Alps. It's a normal town, but there's also magic and magical dungeons around it. So every day in Hinterberg in the morning, you pick one of several overworlds. You can explore, you find, and probably complete the dungeon. That's, of course, where all the monsters slaying, the puzzling, the finding loot, and all that good stuff takes place. And then in the evening, you go back to the village of Hinterberg. And that's where you can hang out with colorful like adventurers or locals. And um, if you invest kind of time in your relationships, you will get uh, certain boons from that certain perks. And that's kind of your skill tree. So people will maybe give you a valuable piece of info or gift you something or unlock a game system for you. And, and yeah, that's kind of how we com combine also this, this mundane and uh, fantastic dungeon part. So with creating those relationships, are there also romance elements to this game, or is it just friendship? It's just friendship. Just friendship. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I had to Keep ask. <laughs> so you mentioned how certain characters can give your character some boons and perks. So how does combat work, and how does it evolve over time as you play more? Mm -hmm. When we think about combat, combat in Hinterberg is is very accessible. It's it's arcadey. It's spectacular. We're not looking for, for a Dark Souls-like uh, uh, experience. And um, there's, there's various magic skills that you can uh, use, there are slottable special attacks that you can use, and then there are also some systems that you, that you can only access if you, if you hang out with a particular character. So befriending a, a particular type of adventurer might actually give you a little combo counter that uh, adds perks as you keep, keep whacking away at enemies. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of how we yeah. how we think about combat. It's it's quite light. It's it's lighthearted. It's spectacular, and it sort of interfaces with this uh, this the social simulation part. Okay, yeah. I love that. We we kind of want to. Um, like you can pick who to socialize with and you can by then uh, through that kind of pick how, how you want to play. For example, if you're really into using those um, special attacks in, in combat, you can hang out with a character who will give you an additional one. So you, yeah, you can kind of deepen the combat or maybe deepen some other areas in the game. Oh, cool. Okay. So with talking about combat, how does magic work in this game? What are the different spells and powers that you can learn? And how does that help your character through combat? Yeah. The magic skills are tied to the different overworlds that we have. So in one overworld where you have these, these mine-themed dungeons, the skills are, are a little bit more physical. You get this big wrecking ball thing with which you can you know, blow oh. stuff up or you can use it as a weight, uh, as, as you saw in the video here, um, and, a, and a ball and chain that you can use to, to shoot things from afar, but also to pull, pull gooey things close to you. And then when you're in the glacier, for instance, we have four of these overworlds, each come with their own magic skills. In the glacier, it's, uh, it's a magical hoverboard that feels a little bit like snowboarding. Um, in the forest, it's more uh, wind-themed skills, like a whirlwind that you can use to pick yourself up. And we use these uh, skills both in combat and for puzzling. 
Ooh, okay. So those are locked to those specific regions. Yes. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. So can you give us more examples? We see some platforming and puzzle solving here. Can you give us more examples of what exactly puzzle solving will look like in, in this game? Yeah, um, it's like this part of gameplay, I would say, is a bit inspired by also games like Zelda, for example, and um, we have a lot of puzzles. Uh, you will have to use logic. You will also have to use your skills cleverly. Like it's kind of a mix of, of some of them are really more logical thinking, and then depending on the biome, you will get to know your skills slowly and then have to think with how you can use them in the puzzles. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a mix, I would say, of, of just logical thinking and, and environmental aspects. Okay, yeah, so I just want to say thank you for making this game because I have said so many times, I wish I could just quit my job and go hunt monsters, monsters for a living, <laughs> right? So I have to ask you one last question. What would make you the ultimate monster slayer? There is actually kind of a challenge in the game, like we have 25 dungeons in there and um, you can try to go basically for a record and try to be an adventurer who manages in 25 days to do 25 dungeons or you can also explore it in a much more chill way and say, hey, I'm on vacation, I'm going to hang out more with people and uh, meditate on a mountain and only do a dungeon tomorrow. So yeah, I guess you could... Uh, chase this goal of being the ultimate monster okay. slayer. Yeah, I think I'm going to try the 25 dungeons in one day, but then get discouraged because I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> and then I'll just play the game as intended. So, <laughs> well, thank you. All up to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll see how hard it is. Yeah. But I want to become the ultimate monster slayer. So. Nice. <laughs> awesome. That's Think a good goal. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. This game looks gorgeous, and I'm so excited to see how it plays. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so for much for having us. <laughs> You can play as Louisa fighting monsters on her vacation when Dungeons of Hinterburg comes to Xbox and PC next year. For more from Gamescom Studio, stay right here on IGN.